Welcome to our weekend edition of Top 5 at 5. This Wednesday, July 29th at 6.30 p.m., the high school youth group will be having a paint battle on the soccer field by the school. Face masks are required and social distancing will be observed. An RSVP would be appreciated. We recognize that many of you are not comfortable returning to Mass inside the church, but that you truly miss receiving Holy Communion. drive through Communion is now available on Sunday mornings starting today from 10 a.m. through 10.30 a.m. Parishioners are asked to form a line of cars under the Port Cachet and remain in your car. There is no need to exit your vehicle. Just lower your window and a priest, deacon, or Eucharistic minister will approach your car. We ask that you please wear a mask, and for the convenience of your passengers, communion will be available on both sides of the vehicle. To prepare for the worthy reception of communion, we encourage you to participate at the 8.30 a.m. live stream mass prior to driving to the church. Dates have been confirmed for our first Eucharist and Confirmation First Eucharist will take place on Friday, September the 11th at 4.30 p.m. and Saturday, September 12th at 10 a.m. Confirmation will take place on Thursday, September 17th at 4.30 p.m. All services will be live streamed on Facebook and on our website. For more information, contact Megan Everett in the Religious Education Department. The United Way of Central Alabama recently recognized seniors who are making their mark on our community through their good deeds, initiative, and helpful spirit. Our parishioner, Bill Lees, was one of those individuals recently awarded. Bill spearheaded the fundraising campaign to build the Hoover City Senior Center years ago and is still making his mark on the community in numerous ways, such as driving seniors to the grocery store and doctor's office, leading the Hoover Senior Center Center's Kitchen Committee, and serving on the City of Hoover's Veterans Committee. At Prince of Peace, Bill is a key volunteer in our prayer pillar and a member of the Knights of Columbus. As the Eucharistic Minister Coordinator for the past 20 years, he trains and schedules all who serve at weekend Mass. In addition, Bill is a member of the Offertory Counting Committee and has served on Parish Council. He is one of the founding members of the parish, and we can't thank him enough for all of his service. Prince of Peace Catholic School will open August 13th. We are still accepting applications for preschool through 8th grade. Prince of Peace is a blue ribbon award-winning school and offers smaller class sizes and a challenging curriculum to prepare our students for high school and beyond. In addition to our regular day in-person classroom instruction, we are also offering an online virtual option for families that are not comfortable returning to school. For more information, contact the school at 205-824-7886 or visit our website at popcatholic.net. We welcome all of you to our live stream this morning and now join us as we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Welcome to Prince of Peace. Today is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Father John Fallon is our celebrant. Please join in singing Lord of All Hopefulness. Strength in our hearts, Lord. 
afternoon of the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. We are the people of God gathered in prayer. And let our first prayer today be a prayer of gratitude. The Lord has blessed us in so many ways. Perhaps gratitude especially for all caregivers of the sick and uh, the sacrifices they're making at this time in our country, in our state. So we're grateful to God for their gift and their ministry. So much to be grateful for. But as we gather, we're also conscious of our sinfulness, our brokenness. The scriptures this morning challenge us to look at our character, the values that we live by each day. We have a sense of ethics and morality. Very difficult challenges this morning in the scriptures. So we ask the Lord for forgiveness, especially for the times we fail to have an understanding heart, the heart of Jesus Christ. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to and you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. sinned. In, in my, my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, 
and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks. 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 be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to your Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant 
searching for fine perils. When he finds a peril of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming this morning. We are the people of God gathered in prayer. And thank you who are with me live stream today in your homes. The home is the real church, the domestic church. So thank you for praying with us here this morning uh, to Prince of Peace. Uh, the scriptures today are challenging us very much. In that first reading Old Testament, the prayer of Solomon, and um, the Solomon prays that the Lord give him an understanding heart, compassion towards all God's people, and an insight to distinguish what is right from what is wrong. An understanding heart or wisdom is a gift from God. It's a gift that enables us to make good decisions and prudent choices. Cultivating and sharing this gift is essential, especially when poor decisions and a lack of compassion have great consequences that affects the lives of all people. In the Gospel this morning, a similar theme, wisdom and understanding. A wisdom again to distinguish between right and wrong. Wisdom to live out the values of the kingdom in our daily life. And being able to relate traditional wisdom to the new teaching of Jesus. So, that prayer this morning of Solomon must be our prayer today. To have an understanding heart and be able to distinguish right from wrong and relating traditional wisdom to the values of the kingdom represent an invitation for us to try to see and judge what is happening in our world as God would see and judge it. We're called to be good kingdom people, good kingdom people. In that gospel this morning, buried treasure, a pearl of great price, are the themes I find and the themes that I'd like to explore a little bit today. Really, the scriptures are about being a person of character, and have moral and ethical values. The critical part we play in the lives of other people. Yes, the pearl of great price, moral treasure, character and honesty. We need those to somehow uh, instill those values in our young people today. But are those values present in our own life? as adult Christians. Yes, my point is that the greatest gift we can give the next generation are moral treasures in the storeroom of their psyche so that they can draw upon them later in life. That's why parents, grandparents, and mentors, and other significant adults play an important role in the lives of our young people. The real tragedy today is that some people somehow have no treasure in the field, only an empty field, that their moral storeroom is empty. Therefore, there's no deep subconscious source to plumb because they have been raised in a moral vacuum. See, nothing kills the ability to feel pity and compassion, like being disappointed over and over again. When we end up in a world we know that we have so many lies, broken promises, unfounded claims, unkept vows, we too can grow cynical and cold. Yes, 
Where do our young people get our values from today? If parents, grandparents, and significant others do not fill that role, well, then they turn to television, internet, perhaps the Kardashians or some other programs. That's where they get their moral values from and character. Yeah, you may have heard that song by Jodine Messina. The song is popular because she sheds uh, some light about people who have no feelings those days, no sense of right and wrong. The words of the song go something like this. You filled my head with so many lies, twisted my heart till something snapped inside. I really don't care. I want to feel something. Let me dig a little deeper. Nope, sorry, nothing. So, our responsibility there to examine our own lives this morning. Am I a person of character? Do I have a sense of ethics and morality? And if I, am I passing on those values to the next generation? We count. Our example, our witness count and have effects on what we do, even though we may not realize it at times. Remember, many years ago, reporters were interviewing the Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, asking him who gave him courage to stand firm during the fall of communism in the former USSR. Interesting, he credited an electrician from Poland, um, Lake Valenza, who stated, who um, started the downfall of communism there. When Lake Valenza was interviewed and asked who inspired him, he said it was the civil rights movement in the United States led by Martin Luther King. When Martin Luther King was interviewed and asked what inspired him, he said it was the courage of a woman from Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks, the woman who refused to move to the back seat of the bus. Is it too much of a strain to say that the moral courage of a brave woman from Montgomery, Alabama, brought about the downfall of communism. Hidden treasures are like that. And that is a lesson for us today, how valuable the little things we do and the people we influence, the many people we influence. As Christians, we're called to have moral values. So, I think a few examples might be helpful this morning. What I'm saying is that wise parents, wise adults, provide this, this kind of training all the time. Getting their children to act with virtue, with knowing what's right from wrong, and thereby developing their abilities to do this on a regular basis, even as they grow into adulthood. So for example, you say to your child, I know you don't feel like doing your homework right now. All your friends are outside, but I want you to stay and do your homework. And when your homework is completed, then you can go and play. I know you didn't like that sweater, your grandmother sent you. She spent hours at the store searching for that sweater. She gave it to you for Christmas and she gave it to you out of love. So, will you please write a letter to her and say thank you. Simple things are so lacking in our society today. Or, I know you received a last minute invitation to go to the beach this weekend and it's the first good weekend we had in a long time. But when you joined that soccer team, you made a commitment to your teammates. You don't have to play soccer next year if you don't want to. But for this year, you made a commitment 
and you must fulfill it. You cannot skip the game and go off on that trip that I know you love. Simple things again, creating in our young people today a sense of knowing what's right and what's wrong, what Solomon prayed for in that first reading today. Early moral treasure burying is critical, so critical. Are we fulfilling our obligation? Do we as adults, do we have a sense of character? Do we know what's right from wrong? Do we have a sense of morality and a sense of ethics? What are you putting daily into the moral storeroom of your children, grandchildren, or if you're a teacher, the next generation? When they look for treasures, will they find any? Will they find any? The kingdom of God is like the perils of example and wise counsel, buried deep in the hearts of little ones. So this morning's scripture is challenging for all ages today. A challenge again in this day and age to look at our own life. Am I living out the values of the gospel? Am I a good kingdom people? We can indeed do holy things all day without ever becoming holy. See, our faith is a lived faith. So the way we live our life each day is important. Am I a person of character? Do I have moral values, ethical values? Thank you for coming this morning. So let us stand together and profess our faith. Our faith is a very simple faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church family. We are indeed proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so this morning we now pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that God's holy people will share the good news of God's love and peace with a world weary of war, terrorism, and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that with the wisdom of Solomon, they will work together for the things that really matter, the value and dignity of every life, justice, truth, and a lasting and abiding peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been affected by drought, floods, and heat, that God will send water to those who need it, bring dry, dryness to those with too much water, cooler temperatures and gentle breezes to those suffering from the heat, and help all to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, today we ask for the wisdom to learn and understand what it is God wants for us, what God wants us to do, and the grace for us to live our lives accordingly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are sick, those suffering from addiction, mental illness, the coronavirus, and those who have asked for our prayers, that through the gift of compassion, our hearts will respond to the cries of those in need. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom the Lord has called and brought home to himself, that they will know the treasure that awaits them in the kingdom of heaven. Doris Wilder, Mary Davis, Dennis Johnson, Mary Jo Ferre, E.J. Thornton, Tully Hullis, Hollis, and all those who have died from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts and for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on all gathered here today. Keep us in your love and care. Give us a sense of peace and harmony in our heart and home as we continue our faith journey. This prayer we make in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. then today, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good, and the good of all his holy Accept, O oh Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, today with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your people spread throughout the world. Bring them to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We remember especially today Evorus Davis, but also remember Mary, his wife, who died this week. They both died very young people, were wonderful members of our church family here. Indeed, they had the heart of Jesus. Remember, we remember our loved ones who have died. Rob's father-in-law died this week. And all our people who have died, parish family who have passed away recently, members of our own families, members who have died of the coronavirus. You know, somebody once said, we fear not death, we fear not being remembered. Welcome, all of them, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We, the people of God, we stand this morning and at our Savior's command, informed by his teaching, together we pray. Our Father, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name, name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory, and the glory are, are yours now. Lord forever. Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people and graciously grant them peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your and with spirit. Your spirit. May that peace dwell in your heart and in your home all the days of your life. And if you feel comfortable, you may wish to share a sign of peace with your neighbor. Let us come to the table of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul shall be shall healed. Be healed. Christ. Shall not die of thirst. 
Christ. You shall wander for safety. The body of Christ. Oh, you do not know the way. You shall speak a word. Mary, God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Body of Christ. Mary, God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Body of Christ. Christ. Mary, God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Christ. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. We bow our heads and pray. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May his light shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may Almighty God bless you this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. Your presence is a wonderful expression of your faith and your love of God. Since we reopened, I think this is our largest crowd uh, gathering for church this morning, so thank you for coming, and we have church every weekend. Uh, the scriptures this morning were indeed challenging. The prayer of Solomon should be really our prayer every day, to know right from wrong and to have an understanding heart, to have the heart of Jesus Christ. Remember the only book in Christianity many people may ever read is your example. So. Please ask yourself, am I a person of character, and do I have some moral and ethical values? 
again today between 10 and 10.30. We'll be giving out communion here for those who feel uncomfortable attending church at this time. So again, all are welcome, and hopefully those who are on live stream this morning will feel comfortable to come back to church. We do practice social distancing. We do practice wearing a mask, and we have also encouraged that you wash your hands. So we, we want all of you to live a long life. So let us go forth this morning in the peace and the love of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. 